as I mentioned in the course, these questions are an old question type. You don't see this kind on the current version of the SAT chemistry test, but they're still good to practice because they ultimately test a lot of the same things you'll see in the current test. So don't worry so much about the format. Let's just worry about the concepts. So 26, what are the products resulting from the thermal decomposition of CaCO3? So this is one where you kind of need to know what the products of this uh, are going to be when you decompose it. Typically, when you decompose a carbonate, one of the products is going to be carbon dioxide. So we can write plus CO2. And so that means two <clears throat> is going to be one of the potential products. And then the other product, then if you kind of subtract a CO2 out of the calcium carbonate, will be calcium oxide. So those would be your two uh, answers. You'll never just get pure carbon out of this kind of uh, decomposition. You're going to have carbon dioxide is going to be where the carbon goes to. So it's going to be one and two. And according to our little key here, that's going to be choice B. Moving to 27, an atom with atomic number 33 and mass 75. Well, if it's got atomic number 33, then we know it's got, by definition, 33 protons because that's what the atomic number means. So three looks good. If it's got an atomic mass of 75, if I subtract the 33 protons, what's left will be 42. And those are gonna be 42 neutrons because the atomic mass is atomic number or is protons plus neutrons basically. And so when I subtract off my 33 protons, I get 42 neutrons. They say 42 electrons. Now that can't be right because if we had 42 electrons, this would be a minus nine charge, right? 33 positive protons, 42 negative electrons. That doesn't make sense. In fact, given that it says it's neutral, we actually have 33 electrons, not 42. And then one is false because we've got uh, just 42 neutrons, not 75. So only three is going to be correct here. And so that gets us E. When the temperature is increased, the speed of the reaction increases because why? Because pressure has decreased. Eh, it's not really anything to do with pressure. In fact, probably the pressure would increase if you increase the temperature. But even still, the pressure has no real impact on the, the rates of reactions here. So one is not going to be a factor. Two is the opposite of what happens. If you increase the temperature, the molecules are actually going to collide more frequently. That's why the rate of reaction increases. So two is kind of the opposite of what it, what it should be. If it said, you know, why does the speed increase? Because mo molecules collide more frequently, that would be good. Fraction of the molecules possessing the activation energy for the reaction increases. Exactly. When you have your reaction, let's say it looks like this, you're going to have a certain activation energy. And we're going to mark it right here. This is our activation energy. And the molecules need that amount of thermal energy to kind of get over that hump, to uh, go from products to reactants, or to, from reactants to products, by having enough energy to surpass the activation energy and end up on the other side. And so when you increase the temperature, what you're doing is you're giving overall the average kinetic energy of your molecules, making that increase. And so you're going to have more molecules that are going to have the energy to get over that hump, which is why the rate of reaction will increase. And so that's why three is true. And therefore, when we look at the choices, it's going to again have to be choice E. Finally, we're going to burn H2S. So we've got a combustion reaction. Now, normally when we deal with combustion reactions, we're dealing with hydrocarbons like CH4 or whatever. And this is really similar. It's really S instead of C, and then you've got your hydrogen. So the same products are basically going to result. Now, in a normal combustion reaction for a hydrocarbon, for example, it would be uh, producing carbon dioxide and water. Here, we don't have carbon, but we do have sulfur. So presumably one would imagine that this would produce sulfur dioxide instead of carbon dioxide, and then water as the other product. So it looks like we're going to get two and three, and that would lead us to choice C.